Hello, this is Kathy Cassidy and finally made it outside to do a little recording for Sunday Book Club. The weather has just been horrible up until now, but finally um, the sun is out. Even if it's only going to be briefly, I'm going to just make the most of it. Um, so I hope all of you are okay. I hope you've not been flooded out if you're in the UK and I hope if you are in India or Nepal or um, Sri Lanka or any of those places that you're managing okay we are still thinking about you. Um, I did hear from Gayashri um, one of our regulars and she says that she's got a big book stash to get her through the lockdown and she's gonna order the strawberry thief as well as recommended last week so I hope that helps Gayashri. Elisa also asked, had a question and her question was, could you read Forever Phoenix as it's not yet available in Braille or audio? I've read the other three in the series and I need to know what happens next. And I'm really, really sorry, Elisa. The answer is I can't read Forever Phoenix yet um, on YouTube because it's the newest book and Puffin, my publisher, would not like that. They want people to buy it. Um, you know, in book form. However, I think if you get in touch with the people who make Braille books, they they should hopefully rush it through for you. I know that's happened before with other books and other readers, so <coughs> it's definitely worth it's definitely worth saying, please, please can you sort out Forever Phoenix for us. And I know that last time um I was complaining a little bit or I was I was kind of set a little question because I realised, um, as I was talking about Strawberry Thief, I realised I'd actually lent the other three in that series um, by Joanna Harris to um, to a friend, and I couldn't even remember who I'd lent them to, and it started a little discussion on whether you should read books or lend books, rather, to other people or not. And Zara had this to say, she says, I'm not as kind-hearted as you, so I don't lend books, and now I feel evil. Um, uh, no, Zara, you're just really sensible and I'm just an idiot. But anyway, she says also a book series I recommend is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and its sequel, A Good Girl, Bad Blood. So if you like crime and thriller like I do, they will really grip you. So thank you, Zara, for that recommendation. I will have a check out of those books too. Um, Francesca also chipped in with the... Um, with the lending books topic she said I don't lend books anymore unless they're books I don't mind losing although I do have a list a small list of people that I still lend to but I have lost so many lovely books over the years and half the time people didn't even read them so nailing my Scroogey flag to the mast and I kind of feel your pain Francesca that is exactly where I am really I think it, it's got to stop it's got to it's got to end now I don't want to lose any more books. And Eliane had um, quite a funny story. She says, I don't usually lend or borrow books, libraries accepted. But years ago, I lent two non-fiction books to a neighbour and then moved house. Years later, I was looking for the books and remembered not getting them back. Um, I knew my name was had been written inside them. And as I was still friends with the person, I messaged and asked if I could have the books back. She was adamant she had already returned them and I felt sad and puzzled. Years later again, she sent the books back to me with an apology. Sometimes we think we've already done the things we intended to do and that is also so true. I don't think people intend to be mean by hanging on to books but sometimes they just don't value them in quite the same way as we do and uh, mistakes can be made. And Hilary also had a comment on the subject. She said, I do give a lot of books away, but never my favourites. They are like good friends. And 100% agree with you, Hilary. That, I think, is going to be my, my ta ta tactic from now on. I give books away too, and I'm fine with that. But the ones that are really special, I think, are going to have to just stay put with me. Um, so I have a book recommendation Um to start off with, which is a book I've just read this week. So it's very fresh in my mind and it's a very different kind of book than the kind I would normally read. I read across several genres and, and sort of styles of writing, but this one um, to me felt very different. It's called Utopia Avenue 
and it's by David Mitchell. And the book is about um, a rock band, a very unusual rock band in the late 1960s. So um, this I found quite intriguing as a topic and I absolutely fell into this story and I was lost in the world of, of this fantastic band Utopia Avenue for, um, you know, for most of the week really. I love that the, the author, David Mitchell, actually name drops so many famous pop stars, rock stars, folk stars, etc. of the 60s and so on in the story and does it so easily and carelessly and, and you know, amusingly that you actually feel that you, you get to know them too. Um, how do I describe this book? It's such a strange story. It's told alternately um, from four different viewpoints of the four different people in the band. Um, and at times it gets incredibly weird but most of the time you just love being there with them, you're following their stories and following their paths. Um, and then towards the end, there's a deeply, deeply weird bit. And I was thinking, this is really strange, what's going on? And then suddenly um, I realized I'd actually read another book of David Mitchell's in the past and that, that this book was referencing that other book as well. There was, there was kind of a, a very strange link between the two. What can I say? It's, it's well written, it's easy to read, it's going to be thought provoking, it's set decades and decades ago. So it's, it brings up some stuff that our views as, as a society have changed on quite, quite dramatically. But it's done carefully and with sensitivity and I, I would recommend it. Adult readers obviously only, it's quite a hefty book and very well found as you can see. So that was my book recommendation for the week and I thought well I can't just you know I can't just stick with one book I'm going to tell you about three of my favourite books. I'm going to do it in a lazy way okay. I'm just going to read you kind of the blurbs um, on the back and I'll tell you why these three books are always going to be in my top 10 um, of young adult fiction. So the first book is called Star Girl, and it is by an, an American author called Jerry Spinelli. And just to read you, to read you the blurb, Star Girl is like no other. She's as magical as the desert sky, as mysterious as her own name. From the day she arrives in a burst of colour and sound, people notice her. People remember her. She captures Leo Borlock's heart with just one smile and sparks a revolution with just one cheer. Everyone is enchanted at first. Then they turn on her. Stargirl is suddenly shunned for everything that makes her different and Leo, panicked and desperate with love, urges her to become the very thing that will destroy her. Normal. So again, uh, an old and much loved copy of this book, but to me, this doesn't age. It's just, it's just beautiful and I recommend it. Stargirl by Jerry Spinelli. This one you might have heard of, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, and it's by Stephen Ch Ch Chbosky. I bet I've pronounced that wrong. Um, fabulous book and there is a film of this which I think is almost as lovely and just reading you a tiny bit of the blurb from this I walk around the school hallways and look at the people I look at the teachers and wonder why they're here not in a mean way in a curious way it's like looking at all the students and wondering who's had their heart broken that day or wondering who did the heart breaking and wondering why Charlie is a freshman and while he's not the biggest geek in school, he is by no means popular. So um, yeah, this is Charlie's story. It's also an American growing up rites of passage story and one of my all time favorites. So please check it out. Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. And third, um, this fabulous, fabulous one um, I don't know if this is, is middle grade or YA, so I'd say it's probably suitable for anyone from nine and upwards. Al Capone does my shirts and um, the author is Jennifer Choldenko. And it's also an American book and a fantastic story, beautifully written. And I'll read you a little bit of the blurb here. 
Moose Flanagan lives with his family on Alcatraz Island, home to a high security prison and the famous gangster Al Capone. But living next door to Al Capone is the least of Moose's problems. He has a new school to get used to and new friends to make and his mother is so busy looking after his sister that she has no time to listen to his concerns. So yeah, that's a little bit of a teaser for Al Capone Does My Shirts, but it's so, these three books, I think are, are just so beautifully written, all three of them. Um, they're so compelling and unforgettable and they will always be in my top 10. So I just wanted to share them with you, whether you are a teenager or whether you are much older than that, obviously, like I am. I think you can learn a lot and um, enjoy a lot from those three books. I'm going to sign off now and I'm also going to give you a little warning. Next week, I think, is going to be my last Sunday book club for um, the time being. I might come back in the autumn, but I haven't decided yet. But I need to start writing and um, yeah, I'm at the start of a new series and I really need to get on with that and really lose myself in it. So I hope you'll understand. But if you have any questions, any queries, anything you want to talk about or any feedback on what we've talked about today, just let me know and I will try to sort um, some answers out for you for next week. But until then, let's hope the sun keeps shining and I will see you soon. Take care.